Law Parish Church, where grace happens. A warm welcome to Seats for Sunday. From wherever in the world you're joining us today, know that you're welcome. At the heart of what it means to be a Christian is to enter into the reality and experience of forgiveness. That's not always easy for any of us. And today we're going to have a wee look at why that might be and what forgiveness might open up for us should we be willing to step inside so let's explore that a wee bit together today. Most merciful God, our Father of grace, we confess we He had made it home. Part of him had never dared believe he would make it home. But here he was. 
Joseph and he talked much about the village they grew up in. But they discouraged one another to speak aloud what they both feared. How the war would return their young bones to dust on this bombed out landscape. He walked down the old familiar road that he had ran and bicycled as a boy. But he walked it alone. Joseph was not with him. Now he stood in the house where Joseph grew up, stood by the kitchen door, watching Joseph's mother washing the dishes from their evening meal. As though she were a priest and this was a confessional, he said, I convinced Joseph that day to lie to you about where he was going, to lie to the recruiting sergeant about his age. It was my doing. I, I told them that we would regret it forever, for the rest of our lives, if we didn't go. She didn't look up from the dishes she was washing. She asked, and were you right? No, he said. She stopped washing and looked out of the window that was at head height above the sink, as though she were watching someone coming down the lane. There only ever was the two of us. Joseph never remembered his father. And now there is only me. He felt listening to her say that as though he had tumbled down a deep ravine and was lying looking up as high at the sky where she now stood in her loneliness. And the word sorry was too tired a mule to cover that distance. That night he bedded down in Joseph's old room, but sleep kept clear of him as though it were a weary animal frightened of his thought. Before going to bed, He'd left on the dining room table Joseph's soft blue army cap. All that was left of him. He thought how it looked like the head of a rose broken off before it could bloom. How she must hate sight of that, he thought. Or perhaps she would cherish it. But most likely it would be a reminder of what he had done to take her son away. Come morning, after breakfast, she asked if he would want to accompany her to the infirmary. She said, there are those in this village who will be pleased to see you. The flu has taken many and they will take comfort in seeing someone back from the dead, so to speak. He wouldn't mind being a talisman for someone else's hope, since most of his disappeared with the death of Joseph. Yes, of course, um, but I don't have a mask. Here, she said, and handed him Joseph's soft blue army cap that by needle and thread had been transformed overnight into something that would protect him into something that would allow him to go to others and to care. 
It was as if she had climbed all the way down the ravine and led him back up the hillside to where she stood, to where they both could see. An army cap, a symbol of loss, a reminder of guilt felt by a friend, a friend who talked her son into running away and joining the army. An army cap taken by a grieving mother and transformed into something that's like a physical, tangible forgiveness. The grieving mother refused to hold herself or her son's friend in the permanent captivity of something done in the past. She takes a symbol of what had hurt and left her in loss and she transforms it that it might protect her son's friend and allow him to go and offer care. Forgiveness. In a reading from 2 Corinthians, there is someone who is in desperate need to receive forgiveness. Someone who belongs to the church, who has done something that we, we don't know about, but it's something that caused grief both to St Paul and to the members of the church. And this person's on the verge of being overwhelmed by guilt. Can't get beyond what he's done. And St Paul says, it's time, it's time for us to lift him up and not pour on to him, you know, cause for guilt, but pour on to him love. And that Jesus is with us and will guide us in that, Paul says. Yesterday, when I was thinking about all this, I got a text on my phone. It pinged and I looked down and Miriam had texted me, my wee girl. She said, Dad, I'm really sorry, but I've accidentally broken and cracked my phone. Please forgive me. I didn't mean it. You know the only thing that I cared about in that moment? It wasn't to do a post-mortem on what had happened had she carelessly dropped it. It was nothing about the phone at all, to be honest. I only cared about where she was stuck in that moment. And where she was stuck was in sadness and anxiety over how her parents might react to what had happened. And the two words I texted back were this. Don't worry. Forgiveness as a given. Don't even have to think about it. Didn't really need to be asked for. Why? Because it was always there. Because forgiveness isn't an end in itself. Much less something that has to be paid for. Forgiveness is always the servant of love. And when it comes to God, forgiveness always comes first. It's not something we get if we can show we're sorry enough. With God, forgiveness is already there. Not as a reward, not as something that needs to be earned, but as the air that love breathes. 
Forgiveness is a given with God. Forgiveness is the incredible creativity of God that comes to where we are at an impasse. An impasse of who we've been or what we've done that we can't get beyond, that we're stuck in. And the, the forgiveness of God makes a way through that. As we step into the forgiveness of God, God makes a way through what we have lived. He transforms it. So the question is not, will God forgive me? The question is, am I ready to step inside the forgiveness that's already waiting for me? The question is not, will God love me? The question is, am I willing to live as if I am beloved and as, as if those I am with are equally beloved as I? The question is, am I willing to step inside forgiveness? A forgiveness will, that will take the broken pieces of who I am that have damaged my life, that have damaged the life of others, that have damaged the life of the world. Am I willing to allow that part of who I've been, what I've done, to be held in the forgiveness of God? Am I willing to allow the damaged and broken parts of my story to be transformed as they're put together in a new way? In his wee book, Seven Last Words, Timothy Radcliffe touches on this. He says, Forgiveness means that a story can be told which goes somewhere to happiness. It's not that what we have done doesn't matter. Nor is it that what we have failed to be or do just gets swept under the carpet. No, it's much more creative than that. God takes these very broken pieces and he integrates them into our story in such a way that our story doesn't stop or become snagged on these points, but moves through to something beautiful. What Timothy Radcliffe says here is, moves through to happiness. Are we willing to trust ourselves? To trust the broken bits and pieces of our living to the forgiveness of God that forgiveness which is a servant of love what will God do with the broken parts of who we are that have damaged ourselves damaged others damaged the world I think this wee story in Timothy Radcliffe's book describes what God will do with the broken pieces of who we are. In the 18th century, there was a famous Japanese artist. He painted a vase with a superb view of the holy mountain, Fujiyama. Then one day someone dropped the vase. Slowly, he glued the pieces back together but to acknowledge what had happened to this vase, its broken history. He lined each join with a thread of gold. The vase was more beautiful than ever before. Are we willing to live as if our broken history can be transformed by the forgiveness of God the forgiveness that is a servant of his love.
the Lord bless you. Yeah.